There has been loads of news recently about cryptocurrencies as their somewhat brutal volatility hits the headlines again. Bitcoin, probably the most recognized asset, is down substantially year to date. Um, questions are being asked about cryptocurrencies sort of once touted hedge against risk. Guillaume, can you shed some light on what's happening? Yes, yeah, so as we mentioned last week, Peter, uh, Equities and bonds have both fallen year to date around 7%. You know, technology stocks have been hardest hit, done, uh, you know, over 22%. Uh, but what we haven't mentioned is that cryptocurrencies haven't really been immune to this. And when we look at Bitcoin year to date, uh, it's down almost 40%. Um, so, you know, people were expecting cri cryptocurrency potentially to provide some inflation protection but you know they're not really behaving like this at the moment they're really behaving like a risk asset not like this digital gold that everyone was was uh, expecting i think yeah when we look at that and think about the correlation it's, it's it's really interesting what we've seen more recently um cryptocurrencies you say you know touted as a hedge against risk now they look to me more like a, a risk spreader why do you think that is Yes, and that's something that regulators are definitely concerned about, that sort of spillover risk. And, and the way it plays out is through investor sentiment. You know, as crypto assets have lost, you know, over a trillion dollar in value since the start of the year, you know, which is pretty much half of their value, you know, you get lots of small investors potentially getting wiped out on their crypto holdings. And then they have to retrench in other risk assets that they own, such as equities. And that could sort of have sort of contagion effect driving the stock market lower, uh, which is which is definitely something that, that people are concerned about here. I think um, when you mention contagion effect, I think that's really interesting because it's, it's certainly news to me because I would have said that crypto was still still a relatively niche market. Is that not the case? Uh, well, it's, it's no longer as, as niche as you'd think, you know, like, for example, as we know, Tesla owns 1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, uh, you know, and if you look at Coinbase, which is a cryptocurrency exchange, you know, now it would be held in any investor who owns a, a North American index fund, for example. So, so we're already exposed to, to, to crypto to, to a degree. And, um, you know, apparently one in five Americans has, has already sort of played in crypto uh, since, since, since the start. So, you know, even if you turn on the, the Financial Times now and you look at, you know, the, the pricing on the market section, you know, now you get cryptocurrency prices there. So effectively, all, all those factors that have made the, the popularity of crypto means that this market is going to be more inter intertwined with the stock market and, and in turn impacted by the same factors, you know, the war in Ukraine, surging inflation, rising interest rates, they, they all, they all uh, sort of work together. Okay, so I, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, one of the things I think, you know, crypto hasn't made its way yet into sort of the pension and investment world. Um, we certainly don't sell any products linked to, to, to crypto or Bitcoin, but do you have a view on this and, and what would need to change for us to consider them possibly? Yes, I think firstly, they're really lightly regulated and I think that that will really be a hard, uh, a hard start for, for inclusion in, in the typical multi-asset portfolio. Uh, also, they're actually fairly hard to value, you know, because they offer no dividend, no interest. So, you know, mm. not ideal, you know, especially, you know, when, when, when we are in an environment of rising interest rates. Uh, there's also a lot of concerns around energy consumption, you know. Just to maintain the network and mine for Bitcoin, for example, there's, there's kind of that heavy energy use, and and we know with the rise in in power prices, you know, is is that really sustainable? And how does the impact of price of, of Bitcoin itself? That's that's a, that's a question. Um, I guess the the biggest one is is the volatility. You know, the volatility is so high for all those cryptocurrencies that it will be very hard to mix. You know, with traditional asset classes like bonds and equities, uh, it, it it just doesn't work. So yeah, it goes back to my very first point when we opened this. It's, volatility is, is, is somewhat incredible. Um, I think though that this is something that we are going to continue to debate. Um, we've had episodes in the past about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I'm sure we're going to have more of these episodes in, in the future. Um, Guillaume, thank you so much as always for your views. Um, they're fantastic and insightful. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Thank you.